So we're providing a platform for musicians that is not common anymore, a, a place for them to be heard and to create a social media buzz about what they do. You're listening to the On The One Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Donaldson. For decades, getting airplay on commercial and public radio has been a goal for bands and artists. However, since the late 70s, radio hosts have been bound by the almighty playlist, which is why we tend to hear the same limited group of songs. But there's a third form of radio with a lower barrier to entry for indie bands and artists, community radio. While you may have heard talk about the presumed death of radio, my guest today shed some encouraging light on the value and benefits of community radio. It's time to get down on the wall. I'm here with Jen Parker, who is the executive director of KRFC 88.9 FM Radio Fort Collins, where she oversees the mission of running a community-based, not-for-profit radio station. She started out in Europe and the U.S. working for noteworthy companies such as Electronic Arts, Ziff Davis, Imagine Media, Raycom Media, NBC, and iHeart Media. Jen has a lifelong passion for music and for creating meaningful community partnerships. Jen, welcome to the On The One podcast. Thanks so much, Phil. We're in this nice new studio. When did you guys move in here? So the radio station moved back into the renovated facilities here in the heart of the music district in Fort Collins about two years ago. About 15 years ago when the radio station started, it was in this facility. And then about three years ago, Pat Stryker bought the whole campus to renovate into a music incubator station moved out. We were in temporary accommodations that was pretty cramped. And then Pat very intentionally put the radio station back in the heart of the music district about two years ago. That's great. So you're, yeah, you're right in the thick of it. So you have a whole new brand. You're rocking a a new brand look. So what's the plan for the brand in 2019? Great. Thank you for asking. Well, many of our original, original fans, musicians, founders clipped the name and was calling KRFC, KRFC. And for the new up and coming audience that we are targeting and growing in leaps and bounds that we're very excited about, no one knew where we were on the dial or even what KRFC meant. So every radio station to the west of the Mississippi starts with a K. And it goes back, of course, to the old time of Morse code. (laughs) And, uh, RFC is Radio Fort Collins, so the whole brand is KRFC 88.9 FM Radio Fort Collins. This year, with our new branding and our new look, if you like, it's just really, there was lots of low-hanging fruit. A lot of people have put passion, energy, heart, resources into this community radio station, and I think the time has just been perfectly ripe for it to go to the next level. Many people feel out there that, you know, they ask the question, is terrestrial radio still relevant? And I would absolutely argue, yes, it is. Give us some of that value, why community radio is still viable. Here's why. You know, commercial radio plays a set number of tunes, and there are thousands of incredible musicians out there that cannot get heard. And media is in a very fragile space, whether you have a newspaper, a magazine, a TV channel, a radio station, just media and technology is really, really fragile. So how we are relevant is we get to play whatever we want. We don't actually report to anybody. We're a community true station. We have no affiliation with NPR. So we don't even receive funding from the government or anything. So there's positives and negatives to that. The negative, you don't get the funding, right? Right. The positive is, again, we get to choose what we air. So a station like ours gets the blessing, if you like, to be able to pivot and play new music, 
play musicians live music when they're coming into town we can do telephone interviews with new progressive artists and that is really our mission we have circled the wagons in the last year and decided how do we stay relevant how do we support musicians support music support the arts support our community so we're not going to regurgitate npr news we're not going to regurgitate ambulance chasing negative type community reporting what we do is we believe we're a resource to not just our community but the world of music so when we air a musician that might be visiting town they may be performing at a venue or they may be coming to the music district to be in residency here when we do an interview with them we stream worldwide so that musician or that band can capture that online and promote it on social media and in the whole world of news and creating a buzz now and creating messaging much of it one can do oneself now with twitter with facebook right. with instagram so we're providing a platform for musicians that is not common anymore a, a place for them to be heard and to create a social media buzz about what they do and with as many independent musicians as are out there getting on radio getting exposure is a really critical thing yeah. so you're providing that service for them we are, and uh, as much as people would like to think that the labels and everything out there don't make a difference anymore, they absolutely do. Mm -hmm. And so when we track on Spinatron what we're playing and report that back, that creates momentum for an artist, without a doubt. And so we are doing all we can to provide that platform for them. We have locally sourced, we have Live at Lunch, and then we have multiple programmers throughout the day parts that are highly qualified now to be doing interviews at the click of a finger. We can say, by the way, so-and-so's coming in to perform next week at Red Rocks and they're passing through Fort Collins and we can get them on air. And you get to have relationships with them as well. Yeah, it's remarkable following those musicians and following their success and being a great resource to them. It's a gift I think we can give, so it's awesome. Give me a sense of the types of bands that have been through here. Oh my gosh, there are so many to count, honestly, because we have all these shows and drop-ins, but from all over the country, the 14ers, Whiskey Hollow, Stilted, Dream Feed, the Money Night Band, the Movers and Shakers, Moses. I mean, we, we get every type of genre. We have blues coming in from New Orleans. We have much local music too. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something we really pride ourselves on. We take a risk saying this, but I'd like to say we, we can own this, that we play more live and local music than any other station in the region. I think wow. we, we're pretty confident in saying that. You know, on the FM dial locally, there's 61 choices for a listener, wow. for just terrestrial radio. And then you think about all the other platforms that people can listen to music on now. So again, how we stay relevant is to be a resource to our community, to promote events and concerts. And we have a community calendar. So we're telling our listeners what's going on around town. We do drop in interviews for the symphony for UNC has an incredible music department. Colorado State University. So there's a lot of local flair tied into the arts and music. Our tagline is live, local, global. And we have many world music shows on air during our week's calendar. And we really pride ourselves in having a very marvelously eclectic mix of music from classical to jazz to rock to reggae, to blues, to soul, to R&B. And that's a pretty full spectrum. And you're trying to work to reflect the distinctiveness that is Fort Collins, as well as to cater to the world audience. Absolutely. And I think, you know, some would say we can't be everything to everyone. So marketing our schedule, our programming schedule is an art <laughs> that we are <laughs> working on every day. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. I would say we have a FOCO mix. 
We air a set number of new tracks and a set number of local, meaning Colorado music, an hour during 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. to give the listener a kind of uh, somewhat predictable sound that they become familiar and comfortable with. Mixed in with that are these new tracks and these different genres that fit within that Fort Collins vibe. So again, what we air during the day, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, I would like to say you could hear in a venue somewhere around Northern Colorado. That's the kind of vibe we are really aiming to create in our daytime weekly programming. And then being a very eclectic, unique, independent, non-funded by the government (laughs) or NPR station, our specialty programming, I would like to call it, is in the, on the weekends and evenings. Jazz, Celtic, folk, rockabilly, classical, world. Those are scheduled evenings and weekends, typically. Okay. And you're funded by grants, basically? So we have several prongs of where our funding comes from. One is grants. Those are ones we apply for. The CPB is the Public Broadcasters Association. If you're a certain size and functionality of station, you can apply for that and qualify for it. That is a great source of income for us. And it's split into two payments a year. That makes up a small portion, but a very helpful portion of our revenue, which is operating budget, you know, being non-profit, really, with all the resources we need to function Our budgets really go towards operations mostly. We get funding from underwriting. These are partnerships within our community where, let's say, the Symphony or Colorado State University or New Belgium Brewing or a venue or an insurance company even – They support local arts and music, and so their underwriting message will message just that. Mm -hmm. KRC 88.9 FM Radio Fort Collins is supported by. Then they can have some spiel within the FCC regulations about their mission of who they are for the community. So we guide them through those messages. And then another source of revenue, of course, is memberships. And those are passionate listeners that choose to donate tax deductible Mm -hmm. funds towards helping the station do what we do, which is to air more live and local music than anyone else and to provide a resource for the community. On Saturday, a couple of days ago, I was here for the volunteer orientation. So I hear that you definitely depend also on volunteers to help out. Yeah, great question, Phil. I mean, honestly, we have a tiny staff. We have only three full-time people here, including myself, two part-time, and then everybody else is a volunteer. We have 60 live shows a week, and every one of our programmers is a volunteer. These are dedicated, passionate music lovers, community lovers. Some of our shows in the evenings, we have some clipped shows where living out loud or Faith in Progress, or we have a pet show. Um, You know, we have some really interesting human interest shows, and all those programmers are volunteers. I mean, they show up, they prepare their programs, they are dedicated, and when someone's away or uh, not well, we have backup programmers that can fill in. So the goal is you never get dead air. <laughs> That's <laughs> exactly. the goal. Exactly. And managing that many volunteers is 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 incredible. We've been blessed at the station with great volunteer coordinators over the years, and our our newest volunteer coordinator does a remarkable job. So. At that meeting, yeah, I saw a woman with her daughter uh, who wanted to do a radio show. And then there was somebody who was a a health expert as well. So, Phil, it's amazing. And and you will see everything, every background, every type of show concept presented to us. Again, what we do with a, a, a sort of board of people is really determine what makes sense to air. You know, we have a choice and we have, there's a lot of competition for entertainment hours out there. Mm -hmm. Not only are there those 61 choices on the FM dial, there's the AM dial as well. But then we're living in Nirvana in northern Colorado. You've got the Rocky Mountains, you've got Denver, you've got 
the breweries, you've got one of the most incredible universities, world-class universities. Right. You've got downtown. I mean, there is no shortness, if that is such a word, <laughs> of things to do, no, no lack of things to do, should I say. Again, what we air, we try and be very thoughtful that it's meaningful, it's positive, it's constructive, it's educational, or it's entertaining. That's yeah. great. That's great. Let's talk about the symbiotic value between musicians, performing artists, and KRFC 88.9 FM Radio Fort Collins as relates to volunteerism. That is a wonderful question. You know, I think what we provide, and we've been working really hard about on this, is to create a collaborative, amazing space, which is... It's fun. I mean, it is music. It is radio. And the, it's it's a happy bubble place for people. And so the culture in the building, I really pride ourselves that we've done a remarkable job over the years and, and especially of late with so many incredible volunteers that make make the vibe happen. I mean, again, it's a space that allows musicians to learn and be creative, to perform, to give back, to help others, to help the community they live in. And I think what's remarkable about the space we're in, in the music district and the timing and everything that's going on in the music business in Fort Collins with the new venues exploding and Pat Stryker putting in for the Bohemian Foundation remarkable state-of-the-art video facilities now where bands can come in and create video for them to then use to get gigs and to get record label signings. You know, we're in that and we're a part of it. So when a band is in town, they get to come here or if they live here already, they can come and volunteer, perform, help others, help each other. And everything we do, we, we train our volunteers for free. That's great. Yep. And then the local performing artists, they can volunteer and regularly get a sense of the vibe of how a radio station runs, get a little deeper peek into the uh, music business in terms of things like promotion. Tell us a little about that. Yeah, absolutely. I think just as a resource for them, um, we're allowing them to create experiential marketing because if they're coming in and they're a local musician or a local band and they do a drop-in, for instance, an acoustic set, again, this goes back to the fact that that creates a social media opportunity for them. But we are coaching them how to be on air. We're coaching them how to perform, how to work with a microphone. We're talking to them about, you know, when they next have a gig, when a good time would be to do an interview to get some exposure for them prior to the gig so that we can help drive an audience to that venue. So we're very intentional about what time of day and day of the week we do these interviews and drop-ins. And then for the volunteer portion that you asked about, we have hundreds of volunteers that work with us at venues and events when we're partnering with great spaces around town for concerts or birthday bashes or live festivals. I wanted to get to this a little earlier, but give us a little bit of your background. Give us your journey from Europe to the United States to Fort Collins. Yeah. How did you get to Fort Collins? Well, it's a crazy journey. Uh, I grew up on a farm in England with a very musical family. My brother was in a punk band in his teens, and I grew up listening to him and his crazy shaved head buddies in the barn practicing punk. They were called the Whippets from Nowhere, and they were loud and crazy and young and just drove around in a beaten up old mini, and it was just brilliant. That's how I grew up. I didn't know any different. My mom is a, an artist and a pianist, and she still performs, and uh, she has made a living out of her art and her music her whole life. She's remarkable. So I sort of had that growing up. And I in England, it's very common to be taught an instrument. And I played about five different instruments growing up. Which instruments? Uh, violin, piano, clarinet, guitar, and the recorder. <laughs> the recorder, yeah. But uh, I still play the guitar a little bit. I'm very, very rusty, though. So I traveled for four years after school. I took a gap year, never went back. 
ended up in Greece, ended up in New York, ended up back in England and went back to college a bit later and was disillusioned with it and a bit bored. And long story short, the, the sort of pivotal moment in my life that led me to the States really indirectly was when I answered an ad in um, a local newspaper. I was living in Bath in England and the ad was for someone to sell advertising with no experience necessary. And I ended up getting the job. And the guy that hired me is Chris Anderson, who now owns TED Talks. Oh. And so I was his 32nd employee and had a remarkable five years in his company. That company just grew in leaps and bounds while I was there. And Chris was really the god of magazine publishing and editorial in every genre you can imagine, from car magazines to music magazines to video game magazines. I then ended up jumping ship and went to work for a client. And that was a video game company itself. And I represented them in Europe as their European brand manager. And they were based in Austin. Mm. Electronic Arts bought us. And then I moved to the States to head up worldwide marketing for that division of Electronic Arts. And then I ended up going back to magazine publishing and joined Ziff Davis and helped launch Sony's PlayStation magazine and managed a sales and marketing operation for five national magazines out of Chicago and San Francisco. Then I worked again for Chris Anderson again. He had now moved himself to the States and had Wired magazine and a number of other magazines um, and started to move into the digital space. So I was an interim director of marketing for Chris's company in San Francisco for their video game group of magazines. And then um, I followed my husband's career in college sports all over the States. And every time we moved, I sort of reinvented myself and raised our babies and worked from home and consulted. And it's been amazing. And then when we moved to Texas, I joined NBC television. And then when we moved to Colorado, I ended up by chain of events with iHeartMedia. And that was where, where I really got incredible exposure to radio. I left there January or so of last year, about six weeks later, received a phone call about the opportunity here at KRFC. And I've never looked back. It's been a blessing. And it's really interesting how how this crazy journey that we've been on um, has led to this place. And so I'm all about community and I'm all about creativity and music. But I also understand it's critical to have a plan and operate in a functional way with systems and organization. And so, you know, I attribute the station's success really to years of dedication from these incredible community members that had the guts and gumption to really stick with a community radio station when it could have folded and they could have given up on it and they didn't. They had this dream and belief that it was going to be relevant and should be relevant. And I think the timing just again has been really remarkable and our staff, even though small, we have remarkable people. And so we are small but mighty Small but mighty. I like that. So you're a creative and you're a really well-rounded business person as well, which is good. Well, I don't know. I think I've got great people around me. I know my weaknesses. And so I feel very secure in the fact that where I see I might have weaknesses, we've got great people in those roles. I've definitely been blessed with a positive attitude and I see opportunity in all that we do. I just believe with all my heart that collaboration, guerrilla marketing, helping others, partnering with people, it works. And I think in, in what makes us so different and so magic is the town we live in. It is so unique. It's not normal. We've lived all over the States and I've lived all over Europe and the UK. And what makes this place special is it's nearly like we're on an island in Fort Collins, that there's more philanthropy here than any other town I've ever been in. There's something like 350 nonprofits here. My goodness. People want to help people. And I think 
One quick thing that I think is really interesting, and we, we shouldn't publicize this because everyone will move here, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Austin is where I met and married my husband and we have very fond love and passion of Austin. I mean, it is a wonderful, cool music hub and has obviously grown and is very, very different now. But for Fort Collins, we've never lived anywhere else ever where you never hear someone say they want to leave. Did you know it was as much of a music town as it is no, when you moved here? No, Neither did I. No. That was a big surprise yeah. for us. The day after we closed on our house was the first day of New West Fest 2015. Ugh. And I felt like, wow, this city Just is Just struck wealthy. gold, man. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then we learned about the fact that it's a foodie's paradise as well oh, and forget about it. Okay. What kind of advice would you give to musicians coming up in terms of promoting themselves, their career, that kind of thing? You know, it's a great question because my mom is a musician and the hardest thing she has in her life is promoting herself. Mm. She can perform and she can perfect her own art but marketing herself is not what she does well. <laughs> and I don't mean that horribly about my mother, but I think for artists in general, it's a very hard thing to promote yourself. So I would say be strong, believe in what your dream is and keep playing, keep practicing, keep networking. Don't give up if you don't get a call back from someone. I think being uh, persuasively persistent is my advice. And I think everything that you do now is able to be watched. Your Instagram, your Facebook, everything you do, how you carry yourself when you walk in a room, what vibe are you wanting to get across with the type of artist you are? Everything you are nowadays is under a microscope because of social media. So although that's a hard thing, it's also can be a great thing that you can get much more marketing mileage out of messaging and being on a radio station like this than you would ever dream. And finally, what's your why for music? What does music mean to you? You know, I think just growing up with it and being passionate about it all my life. I taught dance for years and I've always, always had a massive eclectic playlist. <laughs> Music it evokes emotion, memory. Uh, it helps you dream. It helps you relax. It helps you get energized. It's a form of entertainment and meaning that is just very, very powerful and highly positive. And I just believe that musicians out there, they have a gift to give others. That's why I love working with musicians and want to help them all we can. All right, Jen Parker, thank you so much for being with us. I really enjoyed this. This was a really good conversation. Great. Thank you so much, Phil. Because they're operated and influenced by the locales they serve, community radio stations provide unique programming that includes overlooked and underserved independent artists. And because of the internet, these stations can be heard worldwide. Community radio also offers opportunities to learn about broadcasting, marketing, and promotion. Whether you're a local band or lover of music, you can help to shape the sound of your local community radio station by volunteering. You can also build relationships with people in the community as part of a team with the mutual goal of sharing your local music and perspective. Many thanks again to Jen Parker of KRFC 88.9 FM Radio Fort Collins. You can learn more by going to krfcfm.org. I'll provide a link to the station and other resources in the show notes. Thanks so much for listening to the On The One podcast. If you like what you've heard, please spread the word and tell your friends. You can subscribe to the podcast on the major podcast directories. I'm your host, Phil Donaldson, and as always, you can email me at phil at phildonaldson.com. Let me know what topics interest you for future episodes. Until next time, may you find your superpower, fuel your passion, and light it up. <laughs>